Um, so, um, my name is Brandon Dove. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Brandon Dove. Um, I, I put some suggested hashtags here if you want to say something funny about my hat or something. Um, but basically, my, my, uh, my presentation for really local plugins kind of addresses, um, uh, I, I kind of call it like a state of crisis right now in the, the WordPress plugin, plugin repository. Um, right now, there's there's a little bit of a problem. I mean, um, if you go to if you go to the, the plugin repository and you search for Twitter, right, and you want to add Twitter to your WordPress plugin, um, you're going to get probably somewhere around like a thousand results, something like that. Right? Like, and who knows what to choose? There's there's Twitter tools and there's Twitter widgets and who knows what else. Um, and the idea isn't so much revolving around Twitter per se, but um, just the fact that all of these individual developers around the world are saying, hey, I want to build a, a Twitter widget, or I want to build some Twitter tools so we can integrate into WordPress. Um, and what's happening is probably you know, 900 of those plugins share 90% of their functionality, right? And so you know, as, a, as an end user, you're like, which one do I choose? Okay, this one's got 2 million results, like downloads, this one's got like, million, which one do you choose? Um, and so the idea recently uh, has been brought up of this concept called uh, core plugins. Um, and basically it addresses um, some, uh, some, some problems with, uh, uh, with, with the state of sort of the plugin repository. Um, there's a lot of duplication and functionality. Um, I like to call these uh, these four plugins. Um, it's uh, it, it's really just um, a way to have sort of community supported plugins that can be accessed and used and modified by people who use them, but not create entirely new plugins that um, just sort of confuse people. Um, as far as how it goes. Uh, like I said, it's 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 something like right now there's there's all these individual developers building these plugins because they've got a better idea about how it should work. Um, but in the end, really, there's, um, you know, there's only one person who knows how they want to work for the site, and that's the end user, right? Um, so the idea is to get more of um, a team focus on, um, on plugins. Um, so it, it's less one person heading down a path because they think it's right, and more of a, a group effort, you know, saying, hey, these are, these are some good features. Let's, let's try to figure out how we can work them in. You know, we have um, more people contributing, so there's um, there's uh, more security, less less problems during updates, because there's more, more people actually supporting them. Um, and a big thing is being able to actually customize the code as an end user um, to implement, you know, if it's uh, a slightly different bit of functionality because you have a special scenario. You don't want to have to rewrite the entire plugin um, to do that. You want to be able to just take that little bit of, of functionality you need and access it, change it, and then be on your way, not to rewrite everything. Um, and uh, they can evolve, right? These plugins can evolve with, with usage and um, as, as people use them. Um, so, uh, so right now, these are, these are basically what I think are the three big problems um, with the current state of plugin development. Um, Plugin parts are in the mess. Like I said, there's, there's thousands of Twitter results. Um, they they don't. Um, it, there's no real right way to choose a plugin. You know, uh, I was just talking to someone um, from Share This, right? Um, and it, when you if you search for Share This under their under their um, WordPress plugin repository, they come up third, but they're the official plugin, right? Like there's no there's no uh, Sort of rhyme or reason why why it works that way, and consolidating some of these plugins that, that don't really make any sense will help solve that issue. Um, and finally, like developers can't really know what end users want unless end users get involved in the design process um, and start building things. And so one of the things that this can lead to is um, just like in WordPress, it it continues to evolve because users like us say, well, this doesn't really work right. Like, Everybody's hated how the pages, you know, ordering works for a long time. So finally they dealt with uh, uh, navigating and stuff like that as a solution. 
Um, so it's, it's things like that where users can then end up sending patches back and say, hey, what about this functionality? Um, and, and it can be integrated within those, those core plugins. Um, so there, there's a couple concepts. There's, there's sort of two ways to look at this development. There's um, the traditional object-oriented programming um, or OOP concepts um, that, that are, are used in, in all sorts of languages. Um, and uh, there's sort of the WordPress way of doing things. They don't exactly mesh, right? Um, WordPress doesn't take a traditional object from your programming um, perspective on, on um, their code base. It's getting there, um, but uh, we can still use these, these methodologies to, um, to sort of play nice um, with, uh, with other plugins that are out there. You can, you can um, a lot of times if you have two plugins installed that have a similar names, they can slash because the function names are, are very similar. And it can cause um, some real problems with the WordPress install. Um, it allows us to take these concepts and apply them to different plugins, right? Different implementations of the same kind of functionality. Um, because it's, it's smaller chunks of, of code rather than um, just big procedural um, code. Um, and, and again, it helps keep it maintainable. So uh, people can kind of go in, even if they're, they're fresh to the project, you know, developers are going to come and go, but anybody who comes in, you will see, okay, this, is, this is kind of what's going on in this plugin. Um, and, and so the maintaining and, and update over time is kind of changing the plugin. So this is kind of the, um, the basic uh, way that object learning programming works, right? So you, have, you have a base class. Which, which handles um, setting up what the plugin should do, what kind of methods it should have, what kind of what just basic functionality um, it can have, and then you have these these subclasses here that implement that functionality that, that can do it in a specific way. Right. So um, uh, I'll get to an example here. Um, cars. Right. Um, all cars can drive. You can steer them, you can turn the lights on and off, but they're different, right? You take you take a basic idea of a car as an object, right? And then you, you take it and you say, okay, well, this particular instance of an object is a Ferrari, right? It's a race car. It has different individual properties, but it still has the same basic concept. It has driving, steering, that one doesn't mean life, but um, uh, it, it's kind of an implementation of the same model, right? Um, same thing with low wheel bike, it's got wheels, it's drive, it's got string, it's got lights, all that stuff. These are basically all subclasses um, within, uh, within an object oriented program. They extend a class of, of cars. Um, so uh, this is, is sort of a real world model of, of how you can apply object oriented programming. Um, and here's sort of what it looks like implemented in, in code. Um, so, uh, just like we had cars as, a, as an object, here's our base class, right? It's, it's a basic functionality, sort of a blueprint of, of what it takes to, to build a set of functionality. Here we have a, a class, and the three functions that all of its base classes have to implement are publish, update, and delete, right? It also has a public method um, for, for getting posts. Um, this is sort of uh, an abstract way of looking at some things that WordPress can do. Um, and then this is, a, this is an implementation of that, um, <coughs> that base class, extended to actually define what that functionality does. So what does it mean to update? What does it mean to publish or delete? Right? It could mean different things in different contexts. So um, in, in the case of WordPress, those all seem pretty familiar, right? Um, but in, in you know, say, say Twitter or something like that. It's, it's the same sort of concepts, but it's, it's a different way of things working. So this is one implementation, a WordPress implementation, of what you can do with those core functionalities. Um, so, so I define uh, for publish, if, if you get past an object, and with that object, you use a WordPress function called WPSIP post. Right? It's a nice, clean way of doing it, because if we ever need to um, change the way publish works for whatever reason, we come right here, and all we have to do is change that code. Um, and anywhere that uses um, right here, update, or public, or delete, the, the way that it works will change, right? 
um, sort of the same thing goes with update and delete. These are basic ways that, that PHP will run, right? So uh, down below, this is, this is how you would actually use the class within your templates or um, plugins and things like that. Um, you create a new class. Um, you use the, the um, subclass because it extends the base class. Um, we're, we're retrieving a post. We're, we're using get post. And this one inherits methods from the base class because um, that's, that's the way it's implemented. Uh, it. um, and then what it, what it does, and this is sort of just, um, it, it returns an object, return post. And um, this is a property of that object, post content. So it means in your type in the content area is going to be returned in that variable. Um, so what we're doing here is we're actually changing it. Okay, we're changing it from whatever it was to equal some new content. And then we're updating it. Right? So we're taking we're taking that that post, updating it, and then we're going to delete it. That's the last step of what we're doing. So though that bit of code, these these uh, these five lines of code implement all that functionality. Okay? This is a really, really simple example, but within WordPress if you ever look at the code, it's like 10 times longer, right? Um, so, so this is just sort of to get the, the idea across. The way that WordPress um, handles this functionality is with um, something called WordPress hooks. Um, so this is basically what a WordPress action looks like. Um, there's, there's three sort of steps. First, within, within some sort of um, uh, WordPress code, you have uh, this bit right here, do, do action. Right, so you're saying, register this action, so if anybody calls this action, um, we're gonna call their code. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that that stuff runs right when this thing happens. Um, so uh, under do action, we have, a, we have a name for this action, and we can pass it any number of arguments. Right, so it's kind of like a function that you can pass arguments to. Um, and then, in order to actually do something with that, um, we need these, these, uh, this bottom bit. So we're plugging in right here, we're adding an action with this action name, the same as here. This is gonna be our function, our function name. Um, and then these two parameters are optional. You can, set, uh, you can basically set up the, the priority stack of WordPress functionality. Um, you, know, you can execute things before other things so that the output is, mod uh, is modified in a specific order. Um, you can hook into an action with um, basically from anywhere within WordPress, um, and uh, that will uh, basically allow any plugin, any theme, any you know functions.php uh, file in your theme to access this bit of code. Um, so, so priority sometimes can be important, um, and uh, and you can pass whatever arguments. This is the number of arguments that, that this one, um, this action can contain. A lot of times what you'll see is do action, whatever the action name is, and then argument, 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 that's five, right? Um, so, so in that case, this would be five. And in your actual creation of your function, there will be five parameters that you can pass in um, And then whenever that action runs, the, ex the code will execute um, within that function. Um, Um, so taking that same approach, it's the same, the same base class, right? Um, all this is exactly the same. PHP five, um, PHP five is what you want to target because um, WordPress is eventually going to get in there. So um, you might as well just start start there. Um, but basically, this this is the updated function. Our implementation of that base class, the base class didn't change, right? But we're going to change how we're going to interact with it. Um, so. Before I had lots of lots of things down here that um, that were changing, right? Uh, that, that we called in, in a procedural way, one after the other. Um, but what we did now, and I, I truncated these so that you, it, it doesn't matter right now. But um, basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to create um, we're going to create a new class. We're going to give it some parameters, and we're going to publish it, right? So this is basically just like you're getting publish button um, in the WordPress admin. Uh, what I've done is I added some. Um, some more functionality here. Um, so when this class initializes, which is right here, we're going to add an action, right? We're going to say um, the action is going to be base class public, right? So we're going to that's uh, that's the action we're looking for that we want to look into. 
um, I had to wrap it on the next line. So, um, where this is different from if you were just creating um, an action within uh, within your functions.php file, uh, we're within a class structure. So, in order for, for PHP to know where you're um, where you're targeting, uh, what scope your your function is in, um, you have to pass it an array. The first parameter is um, the object that you're looking for, and the second one is the function that you're looking for. Um, and then we're given a priority of one and a parameter of one, because there's going to be one parameter, um, which will be the object. Um, so if we go down one more function, uh, publish has, has now, uh, we've, we've added uh, a do action, right? So whenever you publish something, um, what I want you to do is, uh, um, I want you to call this action. Any any function that's in there that um, if you hook into it, we're going to we're gonna call that too. Um, and then uh, uh, so so here's the function that we're going to call when when we're publishing, right? Notify. We're passing the object. And basically, what we're doing is we're all we're doing is sending a notification. Anytime something's published within WordPress, we want to get an email notification. Pass an email. Um, the subject line is next, and then the body is the third parameter. So um, without, without changing kind of what we're doing here, um, we're just setting things up and publishing. Now we're going to get an email. Okay, we just added that action to the publishing process. Um, if, we, uh, if, we, if we took out this, um, this first add action, we would get an old email. So that's really the magic that we would have together, right? Um, does anybody have any questions on that before I keep going forward? You guys are all pros. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the other the other bit of functionality is filtering, right? So basically taking any any sort of data and changing it in whatever way you want to. So it's it's basically the same sort of um, the same sort of uh, functionality, right? We have uh, instead of instead of do action, we have apply filters, right? So we're gonna apply any filter that has that 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 hook into it, and we're gonna pass some arguments. So instead of adding an action, we're going to add, we're going to add, we're going to hook into this filter. Here's our function that we're going to call. Again, priority and arguments, right? And so what we're doing in this example is whatever uh, content we're getting in, we're just returning um, the HTML uh, version of that content. Um, so, so here's that, that sort of concept implemented, right? Um, and here we, we did modify the base class to um, to return uh, the the applied you know the applied filters for that. So instead of just returning a post, we're returning um, a filtered version of the post. Right? So um, same sort of functionality at the top. Add filter for filtering. Um, and what we're doing here is uh, we're calling this function I wrote this. Um, so uh, the I wrote this function sets the post author to ID number two, whereas here we're passing it in and it's number one. So what's going to happen is instead of author number one posting the, the, the post, um, I'm, I want my author to always post everything. So um, even if you choose uh, any author, it would automatically be set post author to you because that's what we're posting here. Um, and uh, that the rest of, I mean, the, the implementation is is the same uh, as that action, uh, except that we're just filtering the data instead of um, instead of executing some code. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So here's some. So I've got three real world examples, um, and uh, the first one. This one actually comes from a project we did recently. Um, it was using Next Gen Gallery, um, and what was happening is we were displaying a gallery, but uh, this particular one needed to have uh, a pretty photo kind of thing um, pop up with a different sized image, right? So um, we had to modify the behavior of the plugin to um, to create more images, essentially. Uh, instead of just creating one size, we needed to create an additional size. So you know we're left with the option. We have basically two options: we can take XGen Gallery, fork it, and add in that code to the core. And then if they ever update it, we're kind of screwed, right? Because now we have to update it and match all their stuff. So what we did is we created this in our in our functions.php file for our theme, right? Um, we 
we have we have this add action. Um, Next Gen Gallery has, has this great support of, of actions within their um, within their code. So while it's procedurally executing, um, it's it's actually calling um, actions and moving along. So whenever it creates an image, in this case, when you upload an image, it, it runs this action. So hey, anybody who wants to do anything right now, uh, you know, go ahead. Here's your here's your pass. So it is we hooked in with, this, with our, our custom function, add another image size, right? We did priority 10, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a big priority, we just wanted it done. And passing one parameter. So essentially what we did is we took this, this uh, function, pulled it out of, of Next Gen Gallery and said, okay, this is how they create an image. Um, let's just copy this, rename it, and hook into the action and run it again. Right? So um, we, we set up a different image size, the width and height right there, and we just let all the rest of it do what it was doing. And, and it creates it creates the image on places on the server, and didn't have to touch any of the core functionality of the plugin. That's that's really where where this is really really powerful. Um, taking what's already existing, standing on the shoulders of good developers, and just saying, hey, I, I just want to have this one custom little thing. I don't want to have to create the next next gen gallery, right? I don't want to create just this little extra image. So with just this bit of code. We were able to accomplish that without having to rewrite the entire plugin, right? Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's the first one. Um, uh, the next one was uh, the shopping cart. Um, the shop plugin specifically has really, really great um, action support uh, and filtering support. So we were we were tasked with this problem where. Shop has an inventory system that tracks things as you purchase, um, uh, as users purchase things, right? So they say, okay, this person made a purchase, let's, let's take off one of the, um, the uh, inventory. Well, what happens when um, products are getting added all the time on the back end is this number can get out of sync or it can get entered in the same price. So uh, one of the things they allow you to do is um, when you're checking for inventory on a product, you can filter that data, right? So what we did in like literally this bit of code, right? We have uh, we have an, a filter, right? When you, whenever you're checking for the cart item stock, we're gonna run a check stock function, okay? Um, we're gonna give it priority of one because we don't want anything to happen before we filter this data. We want it to be the most accurate as it can be. Um, and this particular filter takes two uh, two arguments. Just ended up there. It takes a Boolean uh, external, which is the ending of this one. Do you want to use an external service? Yes or no? And, um, and then do you, uh, and what's the product you're looking at? So what we do is we just check to see if um, if the stock variable um, that's coming back from this external class, um, we're checking there's this class that basically interfaces with this um, this third-party solution that's a shop, that's a um, Newman or management system. So um, we, we use this, we uh, basically, anybody can create an extension for this that will interface with a, a social network, a specific social network, and we can just call the base class and it will, it will import the post for them. Um, so they, it, it's the implementation of a specific social network, um, which, uh, which they have to implement, right? Um, where, where this is slightly different is um, we actually created an extension manager that's, it, it, and I'll show you in a second. It's, um, it, it mimics the, like the plugin manager, right? So it, it lists um, any plugins that are specifically within um, uh, an extension folder of the plugin. Um, and it will pull them up and say, okay, you've got these plugins installed, and which ones do you want to activate or deactivate, right? Um, and, the core plugin, like I said, handles the post type business um, and, and all the importing and things like that. But the extensions handle the specific functionality of, of, of what the social networks are, right? So um, whether it's a Twitter authentication or you know, Facebook connecting or whatever it is, that's handled actually within the extensions. Um, so the one that we're actually developing right now, like I said, is Twitter. Um, so it authenticates um, your account, has an application API key already there. With the click of a button, it will take you to Twitter to authenticate with OAuth. 
support, um, which is out of uh, like a month ago or whatever, it's, it's become the name of everyone uh, in existence. Um, it will import your tweets as custom post types. Um, so it will go off, fetch all your stuff, pull them in as, as posts in the, in the UI. It creates um, a custom taxonomy for hashtags. Uh, we're implementing app mentions also, so the potential for that is say you want to list you know, the tweets on your site. Right? You could also, just like you could say, like you could list all the posts that have a tag, you could list all the posts that have a hashtag or list all the posts that were mentions from this person or whatever. Um, using um, WordPress Actions, we, we uh, um, hook into the, the save post method when you're publishing a post within WordPress. Um, and we post that, that, um, that Twitter post straight to the Twitter. So we'll go there um, without, you can manage basically your Twitter account um, posts from within WordPress. Um, and uh, you can set up defaults for any sort of like, it includes all the Twitter widgets, so like the, the tweet button, and it's got um, the sidebar widgets that everybody has, and all that stuff. So you can, you can actually put sort of defaults within your theme file um, and, and set them up automatically. Um, so, actually, before we get to that, sorry. Um, one thing that I didn't really mention um, was that. Uh, I actually just sort of touched on the drop, but I didn't mention it, but WordPress makes extensive, extensive use of its own actions and its own filters, right? So you can hook into almost anything in WordPress, right? That's what makes it so pluggable. Um, and and uh, word, it basically gives us the opportunity to, to create those actions on our own, um, which, is, uh, which, is why, um, which is why we're able to do things like this. Um, so, does anybody have any questions? Or are you going to do it in Data out of filter, 
right? Or um, anytime you're inputting data to the database, put a filter, right? Um, anytime you're you're running some sort of action like save post or whatever it is, put an active, right? Because then people can hook into that, execute some code that's going to lock on the vehicle to plug in, and um, get people with that. So that's step one, right? Inserting that the, the do action and the apply filter within the code. Step two is letting your users know what they are, right? I mean, that's that's one of the huge failures I think of WordPress is that if you want to know what the, the filters and the actions are, you have to go to this like this database that's somewhere else that's fully cryptic. You can search it, but unless you know what you're looking for, good luck. You know what I mean? Like you might as well just like search your your local project for like two action or something like that. Um, because uh, it, it's just there's not really any documentation. There's not too much documentation on the list. Um, one thing I, I have found that's, um, that's really neat, um, I, have, I happen to use TextMate for a, a, um, an editor, and I actually found, I found there's um, uh, Alex King, who is a crowd favorite, um, created a, a bundle for TextMate that um, has like, anything that's in WordPress is basically in that plugin. So it has um, like, uh, I don't know what they call them, like tab keys, whatever, where they auto complete the kind of like, data and key typing and it will figure out stuff. But one of the things they do have is um, if you type like add underscore and tab, it will show you like you know, action or register or whatever it is. But um, once you get to that point, you can actually like filter through all the different actions within that stuff. That's like a lot. Um, but it's it's really just having a naming convention and listing those out. Even if you just list them out, like and, and make them as plain English as possible. You know, um, that really is, um, uh, you know, really all you have to do is, is bubble those up to your developers, you know, and say, hey, these are the actions that are available, you know, and they can at least search for a do action in that, and then they'll find it. You know. um,